Magnets are often among the first physics concepts we learn about as children. We see how many paper clips they can hold, we pull iron from the sand on the beach, we stick photos onto the fridge. But magnetics are also extremely important in the development of power supplies for electronic devices. They play a crucial role in everything from voltage regulation to filtering. Today's Tech Chat, brought to you by Yagio Group and Mauser Electronics, features two experts who will discuss magnetics in power supplies, John Gallagher of Pulse Electronics and Wilmer Companioni of Kemet Electronics. Gentlemen, welcome to Tech Chats. Thank you so much for being here today, guys. Hi, Kate. Yeah, this is Wilmer, and it's great to be here. And so this is John, and uh, also great to be here. Thanks, Kate. In today's Tech Chat, we'll be discussing how magnetics, specifically inductors, transformers, chokes, and ferrite cores, are used in power supplies. We'll get a little bit into some power supply basics. That'll lead us into the magnetics that are involved in voltage regulation. And then when it comes to isolated supplies, that requires different types of magnetics. So we'll get into transformers. Voltage regulation is usually enabled by switching elements. And it is those switching elements that cause a lot of electrical noise that need, again, magnetics in the form of filters to help clean up some of those Electro, some of that electromagnetic interference. To start, we'll take a look at some power supply fundamentals. A power supply has to be good at doing two things. First of all, it has to provide stable output voltage regardless of whatever happens on the input. On the other hand, a good regulator also has to be able to maintain stable voltage regardless of the load conditions. Now, all of that is very ideal because the output voltage is generated using some switching elements and it will have some ripple. In essence, that ripple also has to be minimized. Now, the choice of both passive and active components have an impact on these overall general regulator parameters. There are lots of different ways to categorize regulators. So they will look at the non-isolated and the isolated types. Isolation is just that, where the high and low voltage sides of a circuit are separated from one another using inductive coupling. That's usually done for safety. As stated before, the magnetics in either implementation play a role in voltage regulation, where they are part of building up and maintaining the output voltage. And in filtering, where they're involved in the cleaning up of electrical noise generated by the voltage regulation process itself. Now, almost all engineering is about balancing trade-offs. There are four main things to consider with a power supply. Cost, conversion efficiency, thermal performance, and size. Depending on the power level of interest, different things dominate the importance. In the low power domain, cost and size are usually the dominant requirements. When in that mid power domain, efficiency is what becomes highly critical. And then in high power applications, all four items are increasingly important, but really the thermal performance overall is what becomes particularly important. To start, we'll take a look at the magnetics that are involved in voltage regulation in the process of generating that final output voltage. Inductor losses can be subdivided into three main areas, the AC loss, the DC loss, and the core loss. The core loss is a property of the core material itself. The DC loss is the DC resistance of copper. AC losses are affected by several different factors of the magnetics device, one of which is the skin effect. When passing current through a conductor in AC, internal eddy currents counter the flow of the primary current in the wire and actually pushes the current density to the outside perimeter of the conductor. As the frequency goes up, this effect becomes more and more prominent. The resistance of a conductor is actually inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area where the, induct the current is traveling through. So the less area that you're pushing current through, the higher the loss. AC loss is also affected by the proximity of conductors. When they're closely coupled, AC current conductors almost repel the current density in the wire away from one another, 
further enhancing losses. Then any gaps in the magnetic core affect how current is carried in the wire. The current density is actually, quote, pushed away from the air gap. And finally, there's the famous core loss. As more and more magnetic dipoles in the core become aligned to the electromagnetic field, they're actually less available to carry the flux. So then any additional flux beyond that uh, and the core belongs, uh, the core becomes saturated and that unused flux becomes energy lost. There are a wide variety of inductors to choose from. And in this case, the trade-off between current and inductance has to be balanced with the trade-offs between cost and efficiency. There are two primary inductor materials in question. First are the metal composite type and then the ferrite type. Ferrite inductors have high inductance but they exhibit a hard saturation characteristic, which limits its current performance. Metal composite inductors are the opposite. They have comparatively lower current, but have a much softer saturation response. When it comes to core loss, the story is somewhat reversed. Ferrites have overall lower core loss than the metal composite types. And it's important to know where the majority of your losses are actually coming from. So selecting the right inductor involves knowing the relationship between satur saturation current and your peak application current, as well as knowing where the losses come from. In general, much is made of the core loss, but in most cases, the core loss actually only amounts to about 20% of the total loss. This is the reason why we provide loss calculator tools. In the example here, we're designing a buck converter with five volts input, 1.8 volts output at 10 amps and switching at 500 kilohertz. From the simulation, we can see that load current beyond three amps become dominated by the DC loss. If that's a problem in this particular case, it might be necessary to try to change over to a higher switching frequency where you would use less inductance. All right, thank you so much, Wilmer, for that overview of magnetics involved in voltage regulation. And now John from Pulse Electronics is gonna talk about magnetics for isolation. Great, thank you, Kate. So isolation uh, involves all the same principles that Wilmer's already discussed in terms of magnetic fields, uh, magnetic flow, saturation, proximity effects. Um, it just complicates things a little bit because we're going to add a secondary winding to create the isolation. This can be done very simply, uh, as the diagram shows, having a primary winding, a secondary winding, and when you push current into the primary winding, it creates a magnetic field, and that magnetic field then creates a current in the secondary winding. The basic uh, role of a transformer is just that. Two windings separated by magnetic field and it creates a isolated boundary. There is no electrical connection between the primary and secondary. Therefore, it's safe for anything that happens on the secondary stays on the secondary side. How this happens uh, is a variety of topologies. There's flybacks and forwards, half bridges, push pulls, uh, phase shifted full bridges. But the magnetics used all follow the same basic principles. It's important when talking about isolation to differentiate between isolation and safety insulation. And the two terms are often used interchangeably, which leads to confusion. Isolation is used to protect devices and is a function of the voltages present in the circuit. Here, we typically define a high pot spec, and that's about 25 times the actual voltages in the circuit. If you had a 48 volt circuit, you might have a 3000 volt high pot spec. Uh, the reason for that is that you wanna stress the part much higher than it's gonna see in its operation. 
So when we talk about isolation, you're usually talking about a high pot spec or a dielectric strength. Insulation is more about safety and creating a barrier. Uh, it's used in conjunction with the high pot, but the insulation is typically defined by some agency certification. Uh, and it's important here to think about three different parts of this insulation. We have what's called a creepage distance, and that's the, the distance along a surface between the primary winding and the secondary winding. Clearance, clearance distance, is the distance through air between the primary and the secondary winding. And both of them are very critical. Clearance is kind of an obvious requirement. You want those things to be separated far enough so that they don't arc between primary and secondary. Uh, but creepage is something that essentially deteriorates through time. As a surface might get contaminated, it might start to conduct. So it's important to look at creepage and clearance, and those are both specified in various agency certifications and then defined on our data sheets. Uh, then we talk about the level of insulation. You can have functional insulation, which is just saying, we're just gonna do a high pot test and we're not gonna worry about creepage and clearance. It's typically used in low voltage circuits. You have basic insulation where we're gonna say, we're gonna need a little bit of creepage and clearance distance and a high pot spec. And then you have a increasing amount of insulation until you get to reinforced. And really what that says is there's two levels of insulation. You have uh, one level that can fail and still have a second that will keep the system safe. Most offline high voltage systems would be reinforced insulation. Transformers tend to be somewhat customized devices. Uh, suppliers like Kemet and Pulse we have a lot of catalog product and customers often come to us and need something slightly different. Maybe they have a slightly different output voltage, a slightly different frequency, but the base platforms and materials are all consistent. So here are a few examples of some of the specifications for some parts. The first one is a power over ethernet power transformer. It has just functional insulation because that's what's required by the safety standard. 1500 volts of high pot, it's a 17 watt flyback. And you can see that it's detailed there what the input voltage range is, the output voltage range, etc. The second example is a mid power planar part. Uh, here, we're looking at a part that has, again, functional insulation, but a much higher power level. Again, we dictate or, or detail the turns ratios so that people can take those designs and use them in their existing application. And the third example uh, is detailing a part used in automotive applications. It's got reinforced insulation, 3000 volts of high pot, and this is a much higher power part at 1.8 kilowatts. The previous examples were all power transformers, greater than 10 watts. Uh, there's also a need in electronic circuits to have low power isolation transformers. These have all the same isolation and insulation requirements, but are carrying very small amounts of power. And they're usually used to drive certain types of circuitry, IGBTs and FETs, um, or simply to send information across an isolation barrier. Uh, some examples uh, of functional insulated parts, these tend to be very small form factor uh, and often come with multiple turns ratios because there's lots of different applications. Uh, we also have reinforced insulation parts. Uh, these are used in industrial applications, in automotive applications, again, to isolate between perhaps a, a noisy circuit or a high voltage circuit and some lower voltage user accessible circuit. All right, thanks so much, John. And to close this presentation out, we'll toss it back to Wilmer, who will cover magnetics used in filtering. Great, thank you, Kate. Besides being involved in voltage regulation and isolation, magnetics play a big role in filtering noise. One such device used to clean, clean up noise in the current is a common mode choke. 
It's a device actually very similar to a transformer. Common mode current can create very high level voltage spikes due to the DIDT nature of magnetics. Those voltage spikes can damage electronics or create unwanted EMI. Common mode chokes pre present a high impedance to common mode current, but allow differential current to pass. The common mode current are meant to be canceled within the magnetic core. AC losses themselves are usually what we want here. The main design parameter to consider is the DC I squared R losses. As usual, temperature and current play a role in selecting chokes and core materials. Permeability and attenuation are affected by higher frequencies, as is the same with increasing temperatures. Size is also a major design challenge. Besides choking common mode current noise, it might be necessary to filter differential mode currents as well. In this implementation, you will actually have three devices to install. But with some of the new designs of chokes, we can enable both common mode filtering as well as differential mode filtering into a single package thanks to a slight redesign and structuring of the core itself. Choke selections actually vary by power and current. Driving more current tends to mean selecting larger and larger chokes. From Yagio Group, we supply both surface mount and through hole options, depending on your mechanical and power requirements. In general though, the through hole options will have more current capability. One last bit of magnetics to consider when filtering noise are ferrite cores. These devices are those beads that you find at the end of wires to absorb noise and produce a much cleaner output response. There are generally two choices in materials for these devices. There's the manganese zinc type, which is aimed at lower frequencies, and the nickel zinc type, which is aimed at higher frequencies. All right, I think that does it for us for this presentation of Tech Chats. Thank you so much, John and Wilmer, for your time and your insights. This has been great. Thank you very much, Kate. Thank you, Kate.